Salutations. I'm Jesco. You're watching Game Dev Made Easy, and in the video today, we're going to look at building a game engine from its source. There are plenty of reasons why you might want to build the game engine you use from source when it is made openly available to you. I recently decided to try to tackle C++ with CryEngine to expand my knowledge of the engine, and when looking at the compilation process of the engine during engine version 5.5.1, due to a hiccup with the compilation of standalone projects provided by the Crytek launcher, the projects would not be workable. The workaround that Crytek has is to build from source. This error only happens with version 5.5.1 and 5.5.2 has just been released that rectifies the issue. But there may be other reasons for why you would want to build from source. Maybe you want to add features to the engine and you need access to sealed members to be able to do so. Or maybe, just maybe, you're just curious about the steps involved with building from the source files. To be able to build from source, it is imperative that you know the exact versions of SDKs you use in the engine. Now, the CryEngine website does have a list of all the SDKs used with the version numbers displayed for you to see. In addition, they also have a page dedicated to which SDKs are optional and required for building a specific aspect of the engine. The links for everything you need will be down in the description box below. First things first, there are some prerequisites that need to be addressed. You will need Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition or higher, Windows SDK 10.0.15063.0, and CMake 3.6 or 3.9 installed on your computer. There are two SDKs that are absolutely required to have the sandbox editor work and for the UI solution to work. These would be the FBX SDK and the Autodesk Scaleform SDK, both of which Crytek is not allowed to share due to licensing reasons. Luckily for us, the Scaleform SDK is an optional SDK to include and is only for the UI solution that Crytek has via Scaleform. The next SDK is the FBX SDK. The exact version we need is 2016.1, and if you go with the higher version than what is called for, you will run into issues with CMake and building the source when you want to include the sandbox editor. The first thing we need is to grab the source for CryEngine. There are a few ways to do this. You can clone the repo via a git client, I use Atlassian's source tree, or you can grab a zip archive of the repo. Now the branch that you want to pull is release. This is the easiest to work with and is close to the version of CryEngine that's provided when you download the pre-built version. This may take a while for you to download or clone depending on your internet speed. So while that is cloning or downloading, go ahead and download the FBX SDK from the link below. The SDK installer will take about 92 megabytes in size. If you want to have everything that the pre-built binary has, then you can go with the other optional SDKs but that is a topic for another video. With that being said, I will not be making a repository for this project as I have the FBX SDK in it. I'm sorry, but I don't want to get sued. Ain't nobody got money for that. Moving on, go ahead and create a folder for the SDK we will add as we want to keep a backup copy in case anything annoying happens with building CryEngine. So yes, I tend to create a copy of the repository in a separate folder. I could just create a separate branch, but I'm lazy. Create a folder to install the FBX SDK inside. This should not be anywhere near the repository. All right, by this time, the cloning of the repository or direct download with unzipping should be complete. So following my admittedly ass backwards way of doing things, copy this repository to another folder. And we are back. Everything has been copied over properly. Now we can begin the hard part. If we look all through the folder tree, you will see that there isn't a single SDK file, nor is there a Visual Studio SLN file. 
The reason for this is we have to use the CMake software. If you have never used CMake before, then this will probably be a bit daunting for you. But don't worry. Crytek has us covered because they include CMake in the package along with macros that will take care of many of the hard parts for us. Click that cry underscore make.exe file, select to build for 64-bit architecture if your system can run it, and watch the madness that ensues. Two CMD windows will come up. Leave them alone and let them work. It will run through the directory tree to see what is missing and what we have as well as on the first run, download the SDKs for us. This may take some time as the SDKs folder is 634 megabytes in size. Side note, I did not select to download the SDK as I already have the files to make this process go by faster. For you, cry underscore make dot exe will create the appropriate folder and unzip the SDK folder for you. Once the process has completed, you should see the CMake program open. We could go ahead and select to generate, but in doing so would cause the generation to fail as we have not added the FBX SDK yet. Close CMake and open another window. Use it to navigate where you save the FBX SDK. Copy everything from within the FBX folder. Select the other window that has the CryEngine repo in it. Navigate to the code folder and double click on it to descend deeper into the directory tree. Select the SDKs folder and delve deeper yet again. Create a folder called capital F lowercase b x capital S lowercase d k it is important to keep this naming scheme exactly as I spelt it out. Paste the items within the FBX SDK folder. Now we can relaunch cry underscore make dot exe to get ready to build everything. Make sure to follow the previous steps as before which to build for Windows 64 bit. Click on the configure button. You will see info perforce SDK 2015.1 is not found in red during the configuration process. Don't worry about it as it shouldn't present a problem. The info perforce SDK is just another solution for version control and is an optional SDK. Click on the generate button to generate the solution. This might take a few moments to complete. Go back to the repo folder we have been editing and you will see a new folder called solutions underscore CMake. Delve into it and you will see Win64. Double click on it again and you will see quite a few items. The one we are interested in is the cryengine underscore cmake underscore windows64.sln file. Double click on the sln file to open in Visual Studio. We are on the final steps of the build process. Click to change from debug to profile. Now I should explain the difference between debug profile and release build. Debug is much slower with all the debugging functionality enabled for the engine. Release build is faster, but you have very little ability to debug any issues. This is bad for while we are developing any games with CryEngine for obvious reasons. Profile build is the best of both worlds as possible. It is able to give you performance where it counts and gives you more debugging functionality than with release build. Click on the build tab in Visual Studio and select build or just press the F6 key on your keyboard. This is going to take quite some time and will take up all CPU resources. Look at this. I mean, damn. Anyways, I'm going to do some editing magic to skip ahead in time. Now, if you run into a build error such as this one, the issue is SDL Mixer. You have two choices. You can disable the audio underscore SDL underscore mixer via regenerating the solution with CMake and unchecking the box for it. Or you can download a new copy of SDL mixer. This would require version 2.0. SDL mixer lives in two different locations. The main SDL mixer location is in SDK, while the header and libs live in the location of audio within the SDK's folder. To simplify this, I will just disable SDL Mixer and the default audio option and generate a new solution. Now rebuild the solution. Yay. Now the last step. Make sure you already have the solution created from the official version of CryEngine. 
I am not sure you can create a project from scratch without the official launcher. With this project that you have never opened before, right click on game.cryproject. Select to switch engine versions. It is very important that you make sure to navigate to the main folder of the repo you just built. For me, this would be d dev underscore projects cryengine 5.5 ce custom build slash cryengine underscore release. It will give you a warning letting you know that the project could become unstable from switching versions. Just select the OK button. If everything went through appropriately, you should get no error boxes appearing. Right click on game.cryproject again and select to generate solution. This should create the solutions project for you without any issues. Finally, right click on game.cryproject and select open with editor. The sandbox editor will load up. It will take some time as it needs to finish putting everything together for rendering onto the screen. As you can see, my copy of CryEngine works just fine as yours should as well. If you guys liked what you saw and would like me to continue with adding new things to this version of CryEngine such as the SDKs we didn't talk about in detail or building another game engine from source, let me know in the comments below. And remember, remember, I do this for you guys and any appreciation you have for my work goes a long way. If you could pledge $1 on Patreon, give a dollar via PayPal, share the video with your friends, or even just leave a like and a comment down below. It would mean a lot to me. I also want to remind everyone that there is a giveaway of three mystery game keys going on. Let me know who you are so I can register to be in the raffle. The winner will be announced next week. Now go do that voodoo that you do.